Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about herb gardens, and we'd like to thank whoever's left us a couple five-star ratings on Apple Podcasts. They didn't leave their name. But we're now at 99 overall ratings. Mm, Some of them are actually good. (laughs) And we'd also like to thank the Himalaya Podcast app for featuring us on their new to podcasting category. And if you're looking for a good podcast app for Android or iOS, it's Himalaya, H-I-M-A-L-A-Y-A. Do you love spelling that? (laughs) I do. There are clay tablets dating back around 5,000 years that list a variety of herbs that help illness. And the ancient Egyptians had a list of 850 medical herbs that date back to around 1500 BC. Hmm. It says that basil is good for the heart and dill helps relieve flatulence. (laughs) Hippocrates, the Greek physician around 400 BC, was famous for treating his patient with herbs and then keeping detailed records to see what worked with multiple people, and that way he came up with treatments. Hmm. And Pliny the Elder wrote about Roman doctors and their use of herbs as medicine. Hmm. You can grow an herb garden inside, outside, in the ground, in pots, or in raised beds. And if you're thinking about starting a garden and want to like see... Like a regular it, garden? Yeah, and, and just think about, you know, am I going to be any good at this? Rather than starting a large garden, you can start an herb garden with just a couple different plants. Hmm. And gardeners say that most herbs are very hardy, so they're great... So they're hard to kill? Right. Yeah, so they're good for beginners <laughs> and, and good for kids. <laughs> if you make Italian recipes, you might want to grow basil, oregano, rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, sage, or parsley... For Asian foods, coriander, cilantro, lemongrass, sweet basil, spearmint, or laurel, and you can have a tea garden. You can grow chamomile, spearmint, basil, peppermint, or lemon balm and create teas with that. Hmm. It's pretty cool. You can also use the herbs fresh right out of your garden all year if you're growing them inside. And for your outdoor gardens, you can freeze or dry most herbs and then have them during the winter. Hmm. What plants are considered herbs? So I saw a few different definitions. One I read was plants useful to humans, but generally they're defined as plants used for flavoring, seasoning, medicine, or fragrance rather than fruits or vegetables that are considered like a food. Mm -hmm. And some herbs are used in religion like frankincense and myrrh. Some herbs are considered holy like cannabis to the Hindus. And I spoke to Bonnie Plants, it's B-O-N-N-I-E, and they've been in business since 1918. They sell plants that are ready to be planted in your outdoor garden or grown inside, and they gave me a few tips for growing herbs indoors. Okay. They say you can grow most herb plants using the natural sunlight through the windows as long as the area gets about six hours worth of sun a day. And if you don't have an area with enough sunlight, you can use plant lights or there's these herb garden kits that have a large pot or they'll have multiple pots and it comes with a light that stimulates photosynthesis in the plants. And there's quite a variety of sizes you can get with the kits, but if you don't care about a decorative look, you can just get a clamp light and put a plant bulb in it and that's going to be enough light for your herbs. Or you can get a hanging shop light and put plant bulbs in that too. Who's going to do that? (laughs) <laughs> well, if you're doing it in your basement. Yeah. A couple top-rated herb garden kits that come with their own light. Click and Grow has Smart Garden 3 or Smart Garden 9, and it uses soil based on research by NASA. And their system has these plant pods. It comes with the soil and the seeds combined, so it's ready to be put in their pots. And all you do is add water to the base and it can water this for up to three weeks, hmm. and it has a built-in plant light. Aero Garden, it's A-E-R-O-G-A-R-D-E-N. They have a variety of herb gardens with integrated plant lights, and it uses special pods, too, with their seeds in it, or you can use your own seeds. You just add water and fertilizer. Okay. So if you're growing herbs inside, you wouldn't want to use lawn or garden soil, right? Right, and when I spoke to Bonnie Plants, they recommended using premium potting soil. It's very lightweight. It allows air and moisture to move through it very easily. 
And these premium potting soils will usually have amendments like perlite to hold moisture by the roots, but it's not going to hold too much moisture. And they really emphasize using pots with drainage holes and put it on saucers filled with stones, and that way it's not sucking up too much water. Hmm. Because they said the key thing you need to control is the moisture. You want to give them enough, but you don't want the roots sitting in water because it will cause them to rot. If you're using clay pots and saucers, some can allow moisture to pass through, so you have to be careful of the surfaces you're putting them on. And if you're growing herbs inside all year, be careful around heat vents in cold climates during winter, because clay can dry out quickly and damage your plants. Plastic, metal, or composite materials can actually control evaporation better. And check the pots when you're shopping to see if you need to drill or punch out the drain holes. Most herbs are going to do best around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and some can be damaged if they're touching or sitting too close to windows in winter in cold climates, especially if you're turning down the heat low at night. Use an organic, all-purpose fertilizer for vegetables and herbs. You don't want a fertilizer for flowers. And Penn State University recommends watering your herbs when the potting soil feels dry to the touch an inch or two below the surface but never allow it to fully dry out. They recommend using low-dose water-soluble fertilizer about once every two weeks, but I would check the labels. Mm -hmm. And rotate your plants in windows every week, and you're going to get better growth. Okay. If you plan on growing herbs outside, you can buy seedlings or start your plants from seeds inside. And you can start seeds inside in cool climates and then transplant the seedlings outside once the chance of frost is passed. Is that what we're doing? That's yeah. why you bought seeds this week? Yeah, I got some really cool seeds from Burpee. <laughs> I wanted to see what the packaging looked like, and their sweet basil seeds say they need full sun six or more hours a day, and it takes 60 to 90 days to harvest. Wow. They grow 12 to 18 inches tall, sow the seeds a quarter inch deep and six inches apart, and thin 12 inches. What does that mean? They want you to put down more seeds than you need because some aren't going to grow and then thin them to the recommended spacing. And when you're thinning them, they want you to cut down to the surface small seedlings so that the other plants that you're leaving are going to be hardier. They don't want you to pull the plants up that you're thinning out because you could damage the other plants' roots as yeah. you're pulling them up. So it's about spacing. Right. So thinning means spacing. <laughs> On the seed packages I picked up, it shows a map and the best time to plant your seeds by location. This basil that I picked up said the seeds are container friendly and three plants per 12 inch container if you're putting it into pots mm -hmm. and your seedlings should emerge in seven to 14 days. I got a package of hot peppers and they recommended starting the seeds inside in a warm, well-lit area for eight weeks before you plant it outside. Hmm. Start your seeds in seed starting formula and keep them moist, and the seedlings should emerge in 10 to 21 days. And before planting them outside, they say move them to a sheltered area outside first for a week before you put them in the ground. So Burpee has a lot of information on their seed packages. Apparently. You know the Burpee exercise? was named after the physiologist Royal H. Burpee in the 1930s, and he created the exercise to test a person's physical capacity. So he would have you do a set of the exercise and see how long it took your heart rate to return to normal. Mm -hmm. And in World War II, it became one of the exercises the military used to test your physical fitness. Exciting. If you're starting herbs inside, there's all kinds of seed starting kits you can get, or you can start them in small biodegradable pots. For the best results, you'd want to use a seed starting formula, and a popular mix is milled peat moss and perlite. Are you going to explain what that is? So perlite is a type of volcanic glass, and it's high in moisture. So companies take these crushed pieces, they heat it to around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, and the trapped water inside causes it to expand 10 to 15 times its size, and it creates these lightweight little spongy balls, and it's very porous. So in clay soil, it's going to help aerate the soil and increase drainage. For sandy soil, it's going to help hold moisture and nutrients by the plant's roots, 
In potting soil, it allows excess water to drain, and the pores in the perlite just hold enough water and nutrients for the seedlings or the plants to use without drowning the roots or causing rot. When I spoke to Burpee, they recommend the seed starting trays with a plastic cover and use a seed starting mix. So are these the trays that look like ice cube trays? Right. So some kits have the tray that looks like ice cube trays where you would put your potting soil and your seeds in, and then that would set into another tray that you could put water in. Some will have like a sponge below it, so you can put water in that sponge so it gets the moisture. And then you generally have a plastic cover over the top of that. They're recommending keep the temperature around 70 degrees, and if you don't keep it that warm in your house, they're recommending a heat pad underneath the tray. What's that? And there's special seedling heat pads Mm. that you plug in so it keeps it warm. And then cover the top of the tray, allow some air circulation, but once the seeds sprout, you want to remove that cover and then water the seedlings from the bottom if it has that additional tray, Mm -hmm. and that's going to stimulate root growth. And the seedlings are going to need more light when they first sprout, otherwise they'll be spindly. So Burpee is recommending using a plant light along with natural sunlight. And they're suggesting when the seedlings are new, about 16 hours worth of light a day. Yeah, wow. If you don't want to buy those kits, like the seed starting trays, you can just buy fiber pots and plant your seeds into this water. You can put those pots into like a tray and the roots are going to go through the pots. They're biodegradable, so you can just plant that whole pot into your garden or decorative pots outside. There's peat pellets. So these are small discs that you can put into a tray. You add water, they expand into a ball, and you just put a seed into it. You can grow your seedlings like that. Kind of cool. Space age. Yeah, it's cool. Kids (laughs) love it. There's also something called a paper pot maker. You can take strips of newspaper, and with this kit, you can turn them into biodegradable pots. Hmm. You start your seeds in there. You'd use you know, some type of seed-starting formula inside these paper pots and then just plant them outside once they start to sprout. Hmm. When I spoke to Burpee, they said almost all herb seeds can be grown directly in potting soil in pots or window boxes, but if you're planting outside in the ground or in raised beds, you should amend the garden or lawn soil so it has very good drainage and airflow. They said you can put multiple herbs in a large pot, but check the seed label for the recommended spacing. If you overcrowd your plants, they're not going to produce as much. And match the watering requirements if you're putting them in one pot. Right. If you're using pots in landscape areas or on decks, make sure they have drainage holes and check them frequently because direct sunlight and windy conditions can dry pots out pretty quickly. The University of Minnesota recommends a soil pH range of 6 to 7.5 for most herbs grown in the ground or in raised beds. And I spoke to LawnServe. It's L-A-W-N capital S-E-R-V. And they have a lawn care subscription service. Mm -hmm. And part of their recommendations is to always start with a soil test, whether you want a healthier lawn or a garden. They suggest contacting your local university extension and send them a sample of your soil. It's going to cost you around $20, and it's going to be very accurate. And they usually will give you suggestions for your lawn or your garden and answer any questions. That's interesting. LawnServe said they'll send a soil sample to a private lab for $30 and email the results to you. And one tip they gave me for an in-ground herb garden is to add plenty of organic matter. It's going to reduce the amount of fertilizer you're going to need. That's smart. A good size herb garden for outside is 4 foot by 4 foot and leave about 2 feet all the way around. This way you can reach in easily from any side and it gives you room for watering and harvesting. Isn't this big? Yeah, it's funny. A lot of these articles I read, they said, you know, start with four foot by four foot and then and then go from there. Then take up your whole yard. Right. <laughs> A lot of the pros are suggesting divide it into 16 sections so you have one foot square areas for each plant or depending on the herbs, a group of plants in that square. And if you're in the ground, add three to four inches of compost on top of the area and blend it into the soil to amend it. They're saying dig this down at least 6 inches, 12 inches is better. And for clay soil, that organic matter is going to help break up the clay so air and water can move through it easier. 
You're going to increase the amount of microorganisms and worms in that area too. Hmm. You're going to improve the health of the soil and the worms are going to provide fertilizer. They aerate the soil. They pull organic material down into the ground and the microorganisms are going to be breaking up the nutrients so it's accessible for your plants. And in sandy soil, that organic matter is going to help hold moisture and nutrients. Okay. For the best blend of organic material, you should use a variety of compost. So like mushroom compost or composted manure? Right, exactly. Or you could even use different companies' compost. They're going to have different organic material. It's going to be healthier for your garden. And once you've blended it into the soil, every year just add a couple of inches on top of the area. You don't have to dig it into the soil anymore. Mm -hmm. It's going to slowly break down on its own. Earthworms are going to pull these particles into the soil. And you can also add some red worms to the area, and that's going to make the soil healthier. Which we got some from, who was it, Uncle Jim's? Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Fantastic. You can order red worms online. And they like ship it to you in a bag and yeah, then you wanted cool. to leave it in the house. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You can also use leaf mold or compost on top of the area when you plant as a mulch and that's going to help retain moisture and control your soil temperature. Mm-hmm. For raised garden beds, so this is a frame that you fill with amended soil. There's no bottom on it. This is going to drain very well. Worms and microorganisms will come up from the soil. You want them at least 6 inches high. 12 inches is easier to bend over, and it's also going to be healthier for the plants. Mm -hmm. But once you fill this with your amended soil, you never have to till it. You just add compost on the top of this every year. And a popular mix for a raised bed is 50% compost and 50% mushroom soil, or one-third compost, one-third peat moss, and one-third perlite. Okay. And some top-rated raised garden beds are from Earth Easy, Greenland Gardener, and Gardener's Supply Company. Okay. When I spoke to Bonnie Plants, their suggestion for a mix of herbs in a four-foot by four-foot raised bed is one rosemary plant, three chive, four parsley, one oregano, and one thyme, and then in two pots that you would bury in the bed, Mm -hmm. have two sweet basil in one pot and two sweet mint in the other, and that will keep them from spreading too far. Okay. So you need four foot by four foot. (laughs) And speaking about buried pots, Fan Shang Chi Shu, around 100 B.C., used buried clay pots that he would fill with water, and that was the first form of drip irrigation. So the soil would just pull the water out of the pots as it needed it. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Dripping Springs Oyas, and it's O-L-L-A-S. They have unglazed clay pots with a narrow neck and a lid on top, and you bury this up to the top, you fill it with water, you put your lid on, and it slowly releases water at root level as the soil needs it. And you can use up to 70% less water because there's a lot less evaporation. Right. With seedlings, you'd want to water regularly the first few weeks to establish the plants and develop the roots. And then you can go to the oyas only. Mm -hmm. So just very easy. With the Dripping Springs oyas, their large oyas can be spaced 36 inches apart. Their small ones, 16 inches apart. And you can use their small oyas in a pot. I've got some top-rated soil test kits and probes for pH. Luster Leaf, it's L-U-S-T-E-R-L-E-A-F. Soil Savvy, it's S-O-I-L-S-A-V-V-Y. And Hanna Instruments, it's H-A-N-N-A. And some top-rated organic fertilizer for herbs. Just Sensational Trident's Pride Fish Fertilizer. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's a lot to say. Email me, and I'll give you the spelling. Alaska Fish Fertilizer, and this is a 511. And fish fertilizer is very good for the soil and the microbes, very healthy. It does stink, though. Yeah, yeah, some of them do. Dave Thompson's has an organic vegetable and herb fertilizer, and Dr. Earth has a tomato, vegetable, and herb organic fertilizer. Do you have anything else to add? An herb garden is easy to grow inside or out. Inside, you may need some extra light. And an herb garden kit inside is a great hobby for kids. What kid is going to do that? (laughs) 
<laughs> Get them started early. <laughs> the key thing with herbs, though, is use a premium quality potting soil or create a good amended soil if you're going to be planting outside. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, the Pandora mobile app, and now the Himalaya app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon, book one through six. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us now on Instagram. Fix it home improvement. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week.